Hello and welcome to Faithfully Stampin' with Jennifer Helm. I am Jennifer Helm, the Faithful Stamper, an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up. Today I have for you a faux belly band card. This card is quick and simple and it gives the impression that there is a belly band that would slide up and down the card, but there isn't actually one. It's a faux belly band. So when the card opens up, there's nothing here on the inside, uh, just the inside panel, but then you definitely have the look of creating a belly band on the front. So quick and simple, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So my first piece that I'm gonna start with is a panel of cardstock. This is Granny Apple Green, and it is four and a quarter by 11, and it's scored at five and a half on the long side. Now, typically the cards that I work with it doesn't really matter which style of card base you use, but for this particular card, I highly recommend using the long skinny card base. And we'll talk about why in a little bit, but I just wanted to point that out. It will be easier for you to work with this style card base as opposed to the other style. All right, so to this Granny Apple Green card base, we are going to add a panel of designer series paper. Now this is five and a half inches tall by four inches wide, and we're simply going to glue this to the front of the card. You do not need any special glue for this card. So liquid glue, tape runner, whatever your preference is, is fine. So I'm just going to add some Stamp and Seal Plus. I am definitely more of a tape runner kind of girl, but Glue has its time and its place for sure. All right, so just smooth that down. Now the next thing you're going to need are two pieces of cardstock. They can be the same color as your card base or you can branch out into different colors. I pulled all my colors from this piece of designer series paper. So to start with for the cardstock, I have a piece that is two inches by two and three quarters and then two inches by one and a quarter. And then I also need DSP that I'm going to layer onto these pieces. So my designer series paper, let me move this up a little bit so you can get a better view if you'd like a screenshot of it all in the same place. So my DSP is one and three quarter inches tall by two and five eighths of an inch wide and one and three quarter inches tall by one and an eighth inch wide. And so there's your measurements for those pieces. And we're going to layer them together, but slightly different than what I typically do when I layer them. Normally, I would layer them right in the center, and so it would have a nice border all the way around. But that's not what I'm going to do today. I'm going to take the edge of my designer series paper and the edge of my cardstock and line it up together. And then on the other piece, and I'll flip these around to give a better visual, we're going to line it up on the opposite side, like this. What we're doing is we're creating this faux belly band look. Now, these are just gonna get layered together very quickly and easily. So just remember, line up one side right on the edge. So you're gonna have a border three quarters of the way around. Now, this piece will get glued over here on the right since I went left with the first one, but I want them to have the same border. I don't want one to be skewed to the top or bottom and look odd when I put it together. So here's a little tip. So I'm going to flip the piece that I've glued already, like so, and I'm gonna butt my blank piece of cardstock right up against it like this, put my glue on the back, Basically, I'm creating a little cheat for myself. And what I'm gonna do is just hold them together and line it up. And that way, hopefully, if I do it right, there we go. Then when I go to put them on the card, the visual is pretty and not off center one way or the other. Now, if you're like me, this is gonna be the trickiest part of this whole card. And I had to have a very important tool for myself to make sure I completed this next step correctly. You're probably gonna laugh. This was the most important thing I needed on this card because 
For the first three samples that I put together, I glued this next step on backwards every single time. So mental note for you, don't do what I did, glue the pieces the right way. Because what I wanted to do every time was, since I'm used to having pieces with a border around all the sides, I wanted to put them on this way. No, this kind of defeats the purpose of the belly band look because it's, it's not the look we want. You want the piece with the designer series paper on the edge to match the edge of your card. And this way we have the faux belly band look in place. So just remember that don't do what I did and have to rip cardstock off your cards three times in a row. Some days you just need a little help. So you can put these pieces on wherever you like on the front. If you like them really close to the bottom, I wouldn't go too close to the top. That might look a little odd, but you do have a little flexibility. If you want to put them right in the center, I suppose you could. I definitely hedge towards the bottom of my card in each case. And for this next piece, I do have another little tip for you. I, I don't really claim to be a perfectionist, but sometimes I want things to line up straight. So what I did to make sure that I had these pieces lined up nicely was you can grab a ruler if you've got one handy. I have this nice panel of cardstock that is at hand. So I'm going to line it up with the edge of my card, make sure it's straight, and I'm just gonna use this as a guide as I line up the other end of my card stock there on the front of the card, and now everything is nice, neat, and visually pleasing. Okay, so now we're gonna do a little bit of stamping to finish the card off. The first thing I'm gonna work on is my sentiment strip. Now this piece that I'm gonna work with is three quarters of an inch tall by three inches wide. I largely picked it because it fits the sentiment that I wanted to use on the front of the card in the hello there. So your sentiment can be shorter, more narrow. You can make it less wide, you can make it more wide. If you've got a stamp that won't fit on a three inch, maybe it'll fit on a three and a half, then go with that. You have flexibility in this particular panel. You're not tied into the same size that I am. So I have some rich Razzleberry ink and my stamps tonight are red rubber cling so I do not need any extra cushion underneath. I can just stamp right on my cardstock. Now I am going to hedge a little towards the left. You can do it centered if you want but I know that I want to add a bow so I'm going to skew it a little to the left so I can add my bow here on the right hand side. I'm going to leave that set for a minute and while I have my stamps out I am going to finish the inside of the paper or of the card. So I have a panel of five and a quarter by four basic white and granny apple green ink to keep my color scheme going. So whoop sorry I didn't mean to jar the whole table. There's my sending hugs greeting for the inside. And the greetings for this particular card are from the Eden's Garden stamp set, which has some lovely floral images and then the nice wording as well. And then for an accent to my card, I'm going to use the floral from the Artistically Inked set. So I am going to go back to my Rich Razzleberry and just stamp the corners here to give a little accent. I always like having um, a little accent on the edges of my inside panel and my envelope. So I'm also going to bring over my envelope and get the corner of that as well. Now, excuse me a moment, I'm gonna close my ink pads. Open ink pads are dangerous around my workstation. So I'm going to go ahead and glue the inside panel in the card. Just needs a little bit of adhesive. And this one does get a nice border around all the edges. Like that. Now, for my sentiment on the front, I'm going to add it with dimensionals. You can glue it flat if you like. Up to you. 
but I'm gonna pop this piece on some dimensionals. And once the backing comes off of them, I'm going to add it to the front of the card. Now I could maneuver it wherever I want. I could go to the right, to the left, keep it in the center, work with whatever's best for the design that you are creating. I'm, I like mine to be a little to the left and you can center it right in the middle of these panels. You can go a little towards the top, a little towards the bottom. It's really up to you. So there's my card. Now I'm gonna add some ribbon. You do not have to have ribbon or a bow. It's totally up to you. Evening Evergreen Window Pane Check Ribbon. This is a ribbon I have not used very often, so I decided it worked well with this card tonight. It was just a little something different. So I'm gonna tie a bow right off the spool. One of the great things about this card design is you can dress it up, dress it down, leave it plain and simple, whatever you like. So, watch your fingers if you're trimming your ribbon tails. Grab a glue dot. I'm gonna put my bow right on there and then transfer this whole thing to the front of the card. And let's see, I think I like my bow up here. And I could just leave it right here, but I decided to put a little bit of sparkle on the card, a little bling. So I have my fine sparkle adhesive back gems, and there just happens to be some balmy blue ones right here. So I'm going to add these to the card. And let's see. Just like that. And then my card is done. So once you get the hang of this and remember how to glue your pieces on correctly, you could really mass produce this card very easily. So, because you can just cut your strips of cardstock at the, the height that you need and then chop them into the smaller, um, smaller pieces as you go. So here is another sample where I just put the bow on a little bit differently. So you can see really these come together very nicely. One of the reasons I mentioned using this style of card base is because it's very easy to line up the edges of these panels here um, when you're working with the edge of your cardstock as opposed to working on the fold. And if you want, you can give your card a different look. I used ribbon all the way around the card, kind of keeping that faux belly band look going. And to do that, I put the ribbon around the card and under the inside cover. So I have it taped together and glued down here um, underneath this tag that I added. That would have been very difficult to do. I would have had to cut a slit in the side of a card if I used the other style card base. So this was definitely easier to work with. So just keep that in mind while you're working with your design. But here's another very similar design, just difference is the tag and ribbon instead of a bow. And then I do have a couple more samples for you. I just wanted to show you again how you can switch the long and short sides of the card panels. It just depends on how you glue your cardstock, how they go. Obviously, if you have a directional print, once you've glued things down, you're kind of stuck with it. But if you have a non-directional print, you could flip flop them until you're happy with how your design is. This one, I just added a real simple bow and I kept my design simple on the inside with an additional strip of the coordinating DSP. And for this card, instead of an accent stamp, I actually used matching DSP for the envelope as well. And then last but not least, I just wanted to show you again some different ideas that you have for your layouts. Here I have one of the pieces. This is from the same DSP set, but there's a sheet of DSP there that is 12 by 12 and the top and the bottom six inches have a large design on them. It's a really great way to make six cards cards quickly because you can just cut it down to five and a quarter by four and you have six panels of beautiful DSP that maybe just need a sentiment and you're ready to go. But it's perfect for a design like this because you can just add a little accent to it. Here I went with Rich Razzleberry cardstock and Balmy Blue pulling out the colors from the DSP, but you can very quickly, if you like, add a different color and that changes your look. So for these cards I went with Black Berry Bliss instead of the Balmy Blue. 
So, and they're all lovely. It's just a slightly different look. And instead of ribbon and bows for this one, I added a strip of DSP that was with the coordinating set of paper. And it, it kind of gives you the same visual, but it's paper instead of ribbon if you don't happen to have something that works for your card. So lots of different options. Um, you can see here, you can use lots of different punches or die cuts to um, create a, a little bridge here for your faux belly band. But it's a quick, simple way to have a very sweet card design. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to make the faux belly band technique. If you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe to this YouTube channel. You can click the notification bell and be notified each time a video is posted here live. If you are a Facebook follower, you can find me at The Faithful Stamper, and you can also check out my website at thefaithfulstamper.stampinup.net, and you'll find information about Stampin' Up! specials and different things like that. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, and happy crafting!